Are we in a housing bubble? According to several articles, they say we are. But if you're thinking it's like the housing bubble of 2008, it's not quite the same. Today, we're gonna be going over a few of these articles that have come out. But first, I wanna show you something that I think is bigger problem than the fact that we're in some kind of housing bubble. And let's just talk about the price of homes currently. The average home in the United States is hovering around $410,000. I just did some very simple math because the interest rates came out and the interest rates have gone down today. If you look at the rates, and I'll put the chart up right there. FHA rates are around 6.24. Pretty darn good if you ask me. So let's just say if you were to buy a house at $410,000 and you were put 10% down and you got that interest rate at 6.24 with an FHA loan, do you know how much your payment would be? Your payment would be $2,269 a month. Do you know how much money you would have to have earned in a month in order to qualify for that house? Just over $8,000 a month. Not many American families have over $8,000 a month coming in as far as income is concerned. To me, we're in a different kind of bubble. It's an affordability bubble. And it seems to me the way the market looks now, it's gonna be the haves that get it all and the have nots that are gonna suffer. So let's get into these articles so we can dissect exactly what I'm talking about because this isn't like 2008. It isn't the same kind of housing bubble, not at all. We've killed the marginal home buyer what is left is really the prime home buyers that are left in America. Home sales should be going lower, but the velocity of the crash isn't there yet. According to CNN Business, the housing market looks like a bubble. 2008 regulator says. The woman that stated this, her name is Sheila Blair. She said she had a front row seat at the last housing crash in 2008. And she was quoted as saying, talk about a bubble. It's a classic supply and a demand imbalance. But she further goes on to say, a bubble can form when home prices are at unsustainable levels. And let's be honest. $410,000 for the average home in the United States to me is unsustainable levels. Most people don't have the income to be able to afford that type of home. She said that this could be caused by the speculative buying and as the case with the subprime mortgage crisis when people could not make their mortgage payments and were buying homes with very little money down. Not only that, in 2008, people didn't have equity in their homes. Today, there is a boatload of equity in their homes. The second thing that I want to state about this is we had tons of people that were buying houses that had no business buying a house. But then the last 10 years, they have tightened the type of people that are allowed to purchase a home. No longer can you have just a pay stub and telephone bill and just say, yeah, I make around that amount of money in order to get a home loan. It's just not the same as it was before. As far as speculative buying is concerned, we had tons of home flippers that were gonna be billionaires because they find a house, fix it up, and then they would try to make as much money as they possibly could, especially in areas areas like Arizona, Las Vegas, even Orlando, Florida. And those markets during the 2008 crash, sure enough, lost the most amount of equity in them. Most areas today don't have that problem because our speculative buyers today aren't house flippers necessarily. Don't get me wrong, there's still many of those out there. But the ones that are really scooping up the most affordable homes in the United States, institutional investors, those are the people that are buying up houses. And do you think they're gonna give up those houses when they're making the amount of rent that they are on those houses? houses? Absolutely not. Unsustainable pricing for the average American to buy a house? Yes, that's a bubble, but not a bubble in the way that it was in 2008. We're going to need something more significant to happen in order for home prices to drop. Even though we're having a lot less home sales and homes closing than last year than we did the year prior, it doesn't mean that the bubble is about to burst. It's a little bit different than it was last time. So currently only 1.1 million homes actually owe more on their mortgage than what the house is worth. That's a very small amount in comparison to what it was in 2008. In 2009, 26% of all mortgage properties owed more than what their house was worth. We were in a completely different situation than we are now. And then Bear goes on to say, unlike the mid-2000s, homeowners today have built up significant cushion on equity. They shouldn't find themselves in a situation during the subprime meltdown where many owned more than the houses were worth. Another statistic that people don't know about is the fact that 42% of Americans don't even own a mortgage. They own it free and clear. Legendary Jeremy Grantham, he's been warning about the eventual plunge in home prices around the world. He says that real estate is in a global bubble. And if you've been looking at any articles from countries like Australia, the UK, it doesn't look any different than what we're going through here in the United States. He said home prices will come down 30% would be a pretty good guess. He might be a legendary investor, but 30% is really high. Yet others on Wall Street are confident home prices will continue to rise. And despite mortgage rates, 
it's literally hitting right over 8%, they're now starting to come down. That's a signal to me that pent up demand is going to cause more people to enter into the market. Even CoreLogix expects home prices to increase 4.3% next year. And even though the economists are still pretty optimistic about home prices going up, that doesn't mean that every area is going to be seeing those same kinds of increases in home prices. Even like places like Miami and Los Angeles, Austin, Texas, he sees those as overvalued housing markets and have been mostly affected by the sharpest increases during the last two years. So they'll see the most significant declines over next year. That's what he's saying. Who knows if that's actually what's going to happen. They're all playing this. You know, this is what we think is going to happen. But a lot of these experts as of last year were very incorrect on what was going to happen with home prices when we saw an increase in interest rates. And the reason being, many of them didn't think about the fact of the lack of supply of homes. Now, if you live in an area that has had extreme growth of new construction, most likely you're going to see the biggest significant changes in your housing market that's affected by housing interest rates. Home builders in the last year have been a lot more forgiving and giving a lot more incentives and in even buying down your interest rates in order for you to purchase a home. But if you live in other areas that haven't had a huge boom in new construction, you're not seeing any incentives from home builders that have been building and you aren't seeing any kind of home prices decline. They just continue to go up and up and up. And if interest rates go down with the lack of supply that has tightened across the United States, you're gonna to continue to see those home prices go up. But we already crashed in sales last year. So I think that's the confusing part because it's more expensive to buy a home now than last year and home sales are pretty much kind of stuck. Even the Fannie Mae CEO said that it's unusual that home prices haven't dropped since the mortgage rates had gone up. But what has surprised us the most is the stickiness of home prices. Supply is the issue. There is no place to go and there is a lack of inventory. And the main reason from Lawrence Yoon, the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors, that says that home buyers shouldn't hold their breath in a drop in prices. There's not going to be a big home price crash. A prolonged drop of 10 to 15% cannot happen in a tightened supply. Yoon also noted that London was in a miss of a housing bubble years ago, and they've only seen home prices continue to rise, albeit with fewer people actually participating in the market. We're gonna see a lot less home sales than we did in years previous, because not as many people can afford it. But the ones that can't afford it will still continue to buy, and that's still gonna make for home prices to continue to rise. I think that's what's gonna happen, unless of one key thing. We have over 156 million people working. Four million monthly home sales isn't that much. So in that context, Hopefully that explains why home sales aren't crashing anymore. Whenever we had the 2008, 9, 10 housing crash, one of the biggest things that was going on during that time was people didn't have a job. There were so many people that were out of work. And when they were out of work, they couldn't pay for their mortgage on a house that was completely overvalued and more and more people were foreclosed on. Today, the jobs market continues to look good, even though people are not getting paid more money. It would take the average person and being paid like 25 to 55% more in order to afford the average home in the United States. But unless we see a significant drop in the amount of people that are working, we're not going to see a massive pop of the bubble like we did in 2009. The world has shifted and it's become a playground for the wealthy. And the more wealthy you are, the better you can play in this playground. With the lack of supply that we have of homes, only the people with deep pockets are going to be able to afford a home. There's too much demand and not enough supply. This will look different for you if if you live in an area that has a lot of new home construction. Another article that came out about the housing bubble came from Fortune magazine. And they said the housing market is about to have the slowest year since the real estate bubble in 2008, according to the National Association of Realtors. They said at the current pace, total existing home sales in 2023 are projected to be at 4.1 million. That would be the lowest number since the subprime crisis of 2008. We got to focus on jobs if you're thinking that the home prices are going to drop. We're not there yet. We haven't seen unemployment hit 8%. And there's all sorts of other factors that happen when a housing crash happens is not the same thing that we're seeing today. We have a lack of supply. In 2008, 2009, we had an oversupply of homes. And even builder sentiment today, measurement of how builders feel about the housing market, dropped to the lowest point this year. Now, there's some optimism now because the mortgage rates have actually continued to drop just recently. But now the interest rates have come down a little bit. I bet you, you see a little bit more activity coming from home builders. We love to blame the home builders for the lack of affordability in the United States, but we also don't have enough 
smaller homes. There was this big discussion just recently that there was going to be a housing bubble of homes that hit the market because of what they called the silver tsunami. And that was supposed to be all the baby boomers that had their homes that they raised children in all of a sudden, all at once, decide to downsize and sell their homes and move to Florida or wherever. The problem is with this whole entire theory is that baby boomers are not in their 50s. They're a lot older. And now we've hit this point where baby boomers either A, are aging in place, B, can't afford the new home prices to downsize, or C, can't find a house that's small enough because the homes that have been built by home builders over the last 10 years are not downsized properties. They're bigger properties. Somebody actually in a live stream gave me a really good point on this. And that is that as us as Gen Xers are raising our kids, more likely we're going to be ending up in bigger homes. And then or we can add to those homes and allow our family members to move into us. It's going to be a change in our American culture if we decide to change the narrative instead of having us have our own individual houses all across the country that we all as a family, in order to save money, live in one big giant home. That's a possibility. Let me know if you think that that is a possibility for you. I wouldn't mind my kids living with me. I don't know if they'd like to live with me, but I wouldn't mind that. Look, I understand the housing market can be super depressing. And all this talk about housing bubbles and housing crashes is makes you very hopeful, especially if you're looking for a more affordable place to live. And I just want to give you the opportunity to kind of think of other ways to buy pieces of real estate or get your foot into the door of real estate. You're never making any kind of money when you're renting a place. Everybody knows that. You can get your foot in the door by owning a smaller piece of property, something you probably don't really necessarily love, or you could put think about buying a manufactured home that's already on an existing piece of property. Now, I want to caution you on this is if you're planning on putting a manufactured home in a park, just know you're going to have to pay park fees and that loan process is completely different. But if you actually buy a manufactured home on a piece of land, that is an opportunity for you to not only just live in that home for a lot less of a mortgage than you would on a traditional stick bed home, you could keep that manufactured home until you decided to build your dream house, something you could afford, maybe even have your whole entire family in it. And you could keep that manufactured home and have one of your family members live in it like your mother-in-law. Another thing to consider is just exactly what the commenter on my live stream said. Buy yourself a bigger home that would fit your entire family. See if there's a way you could break it up so you're not climbing all over each other. But that way you guys could have your own individual space. You have your foot in the door of real estate. Everybody has their own equity in the house and nobody has to pay a landlord rent. There's another bubble I want to talk about. It's kind of like the elephant in a room when you talk to real estate agents. And there's been several lawsuits in the real estate world against the National Association of Realtors and some of the biggest brokerages across the United States saying that they have done some price fixing and causing commissions to be out of reach for a lot of home sellers. They won that case. It cost them billions of dollars and it's going to be a lengthy process for those lawsuits to go through the whole court of appeals. And that's what's going to happen. In the meantime, though, that doesn't mean that it's not going to affect the housing market in 2024, I can guarantee you that a lot of purchase agreements in every single state are going to have different verbiage on how commissions are presented to the sellers and to the buyers. I also predict with my crystal ball that a lot of states are going to be turning to a different type of selling process where the buyer's agent is going to be paid by the buyers themselves, and then the sellers are going to pay their own commissions to their selling agent. This was very much how real estate was done in the 70s, and that's when everything changed. They had come up with this way of of compensating both the buyer's agent and the seller's agent. And the reason being is because it became a buyer beware situation. The real estate agent would represent the sellers and any buyers that came in, they would represent basically both sides. Today, we call that dual agency. And then you would get the commission on both sides. You're going to see a lot more agents dipping out of the industry, especially if they're buyer's agents. And you're going to see a lot more dual representation. And I just want you to be very aware that it's very difficult for any agent. I don't care how reputable they are to represent both sides fairly. We are human beings and we can't help but like one person more than the other. But that's why I never did dual agency. I had stopped doing that years and years and years ago. With this new lawsuit, it may be only one real estate agent that represents both sides. And you tell me if that's 
fair to you? Don't you think that's a like a buyer beware situation? And if we're being realistic, most buyers, especially first time home buyers, are trying to save as much money as possible. A lot of them are not going to be able to fork over the money for a real estate agent. Surely they can roll in those costs into their mortgage. But a lot of people are looking for the lowest price that they can possibly get on a home. And not many people see the value in real estate agents like they probably should. I know many of you in the comments section are going to tell me real estate agents are useless. And I get it. <laughs> I've met my fair share of people that didn't necessarily probably need a license. But you know, I get it. I know what you're saying. <laughs> but a good real estate agent is worth their weight in gold. <laughs> Look, I hate crystal ball predictions when it comes to the housing market. But if you ask me the way that the current conditions are right now, I still see home prices continuing to go up. My biggest concern is that if mortgage rates go down again, that we could see home prices actually even go up higher than anticipated. I'm worried about it. I don't know how long this is actually sustainable. I think home prices right now are absolutely ridiculous. For a lot of people, the majority of their income actually goes to housing. And it's never been like that in history. At some point, something has to give. I see it as a job market collapsing and that causing home prices to drop because people would lose their homes. But it would still take several years for that to happen. I would love to know what your prediction is. What do you think is going to cause the bubble to pop? Let me know in the comments section below. To watch more videos about the housing market, you're going to want to watch these videos right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.